Taken together, what do these shifts to our social compact mean? In fact, some ask, has the 4G team shifted to the left? It's not so simple. Our governing approach is not so easy to characterize along the traditional political spectrum of left and right. After all, we have always strived to appeal to a broad base of Singaporeans, and we have always taken care not to base our legitimacy on any narrow social group or class. We also do not blindly copy or replicate the models of other countries. The countries with more welfarist policies in continental Europe and the Nordics have much higher levels of state-financed welfare provisions. From the government's point of view, it is very clear we do not intend to adopt such a model of comprehensive universal welfare. Instead, we will chart our own way forward, staying true to our core values. While we will indeed do more to strengthen social safety nets, we will move with prudence and discipline and not end up inflicting heavy tax burdens on everyone. Today, our overall tax burden for the middle income group is far lower than other advanced nations and we will strive to keep it that way. We will continue to sustain real income growth for the middle. And this is why economic growth is non-negotiable for us. We already know that our growth rates will gradually come down as our labour force expands more slowly, becomes older, but growth remains essential. If we don't grow the economic pie, there will be fewer jobs and less scope for social support. So please do not be mistaken. This government will and must always be pro-growth and pro-inclusivity. Faced with the stark realities of a troubled world, what do we do? My message to Singaporeans is simple. There is no challenge we cannot overcome, no obstacle we cannot deal with. Singapore can remain exceptional. We can keep the Singapore story going and we can move forward together as one people.